look at these uh, ears of corn. I know the drawings are, uh, are difficult. <coughs> now, remember we have 15, maybe 16 kinds of corn. Here's just a sample of some. But remember what I talked about? If you crack the kernel in, you're going to see a different pattern inside the corn. <coughs> so that dent corn we're looking at, see the dent that comes in here? It's got a very hard case where the other corn has got a lot of flour. So if you're making um, uh, corn bread, uh, you, you want a, a lot of flour. The dent corn also say it has a higher sugar content. When it dries, it's like a raisin, you know, a grape turns into a raisin, it looks all wrinkly, just like old men. So what happens here <laughs> is that because we're so sweet, we wrinkle up. <laughs> She's laughing because she knows me too well. <laughs> so, in terms of varieties of corn, we got popcorn, which our ancestors used to uh, grow, flint corn, like the big long white one we're talking about, the dent corn, sweet corn, look at that, that's all sugar. And then the soft or flour corn, and then this great one down here, it's called pod, and for some reason, grandfather corn. Seems to me it should be called grandmother corn, but anyway, it was probably named by some non-native male scientist. Anyway, <clears throat> so each one of us a long time ago would have to know a certain amount about, a little bit about each one, but it's kind of specialized as to what you're going. A really hard shell in the popcorn, that's why it explodes when, it, when, you, when, you, when you heat it up. The podcorn, interestingly enough, every kernel has a husk around it. Some people believe that's the very ancient corn. Now, I don't know how they prepared it because we've lost it. One day, a, uh, an agronomist from Cornell was visiting Tonawanda trying to find out about our old corns. Got to this one guy's house and he says, you know anything about this grandfather corn? And um, especially with the old guys, it always used to be funny because you never know if they're actually telling you the truth or tricking you or just lying. So uh, <laughs> he uh, said, oh yeah. He says, I have some. You want to see it? He reached under his bed. He pulled out this bag. And in there were a couple of um, these. They're real short, these cobs of this pod corn. And the guy says, how long have you had that? He said, yeah, about 50 years. Been under his bed all this time. Surprised the mice didn't eat it. The guy from Cornell took it back to Cornell. The Cornell has a seed bank. Cornell is in an agronomy school, and they used to actually work with our people a lot. Anyway, they take these 50-year-old seeds through modern greenhouse practices, we're able to re-sprout some of them. Now, the older the corn sits there, the less likely it is going to be to, uh, to germinate and sprout again. So it's kind of like a miracle that a 50-year-old piece of corn could sprout again, 